Okay, in this video, shouldn't be a real long video, it should be a pretty quick project. We'll do another Steve Good vase. Uh, it's just a rose vase. My wife loves roses. I saw this. I thought, well, I'll make this for her. I don't have any real exotic wood. I'm using up some uh, some oddball stuff I've got here. I layered this. This is maple, I believe. It came in a seconds package. That's going to be the body. The body of the vase. He says three quarter to one inch. That actually comes to an inch and a quarter, I believe. An uh, inch and an eighth, actually, when it's layered. Uh, this is some other oddball stuff. It's not exactly a quarter inch, but it's real close. Not even sure what any of this wood is. It, like I say, I bought it in a second package. I got it real quick, uh, real cheap, and uh, I need to use some of it up because I've done that a couple of three times, and I've piled up a lot of this uh, excess wood here. And it's not always nominal thickness. Sometimes it's very nice wood. Sometimes it's a cheap light wood. But I've got some really good pieces out of it doing that in the past. And I think this is going to look, look okay. It's not going to be something super beautiful. I like, like to use walnut and stuff like that in something like this. But I don't have any of that right now that I want to use for this. And this is going to be in, in, in the base uh, playlist I have. This is the one I'm still finishing up from the Carol Rothman book. I'm slowly putting layers of poly on it. I thinned that poly down so thin I don't get much poly at a time, but I'll just continue to layer it on and finally get it to looking good. I gotta go buy me some more finishes. I'm about out of finish. So I'm gonna cut this one probably with a probably with a nine. That's pretty thick and it's pretty tough. I'm gonna cut it really slowly, really carefully. Uh Seeing something like this, you got these long, long pieces. And I, uh, my procedure to cutting those things, now that's not as critical on something like this. It's thick and solid. But you're getting something light. I always want to finish the cut at the base. Uh, I don't want to finish the cut out on the end because then you're putting leverage on that long piece. It could snap. And this one it probably won't be a problem. It's thick and the green's going in my direction. There's something to be aware of. You now you get into uh, something like this right here. Uh, I don't want to finish the cut out here. I want to finish the cut at the base of that peninsula, as I would call it. But anyway, that's just, I was going to do a little video on some of those little things I use that I don't even think about. I just do it. And somebody asked me some questions and some comments about one of them. And, and I got to thinking, well, I should analyze what I do because I do those things without thinking. And maybe I should analyze it and do a video on it. But that's a future thing. Right now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna cut this little thing out. And I really like Steve Good's vases. They're they're very nice. And can, you can uh, even, if you wanted to, you could put your own personal pattern on one of them. You could personalize it or do whatever you wanted to. And I'm thinking about doing some of that. Now it's, it's way less complex than this. He has something similar to this. I think he has a pattern. I may do that one. Uh, next week or in a week or two. But anyway, right now, I'm going to set me up a number nine, probably blade, at least a seven. It's depending on what I've got available handy over there. And cut this, and then I'll come back and do the fret work. And it'll almost be done then. It'll be a matter of uh, finishing it up. Uh, probably going to router it a little bit, soften the edges, and uh, put some kind of, see what I've got for a finish. I'll try to put some kind of finish on it.
Well, I've moved back down to a number three blade. Uh, I probably could cut these with a five, but these serrations on these leaves are a little more detailed. I feel more comfortable doing that with a three. Uh, you see right there, they're very small, but I could do that with a five, but like I say, I feel more comfortable doing it with a three. So that's what I'm going to use for this little bit of fretwork. Well, it's cut out and glued together. Now I got to take it and sand it, match everything up, smooth it out. It's, it's pretty good, but it still needs to be cleaned up. And then I'll see if I've got something to finish it with. Bring the grain out on it a little bit, give it a little character maybe. So let me get over to the sander and get to work. Okay, well, there's the finished base. 
I've got one good coat of a finish on it. Uh, I'm going to need some more, a little sanding in between. But I just wanted to get that grain kind of brought out in it. Uh, I really like the way it worked, but it looks. Uh, grain is, it's got some strange grain right there. I kind of like it, kind of seems to fit. So I hope you like that. I've enjoyed doing this one. And like I say, that's really for my wife because she really likes uh, roses. She's got a couple of rose bushes out there. And uh, so I just thought maybe she would appreciate this. And I really like these uh, vases that Steve does. They're not real complex to make, but they look really nice. And uh, I'm going to do some more of them. He's got a couple of books. I'm probably going to buy one or both of them eventually. And uh, I'll see how well these sell down at my little consignment shop too. So anyway, hope you like that. If you do, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, and we'll see more of these. And, uh, well, subscribe. I'm going to do... He's, he does, a like I said, concentric ring base also. I'm going to try his. And i got some more from Carol Rothman's book, I'm going to try. It's just a matter of getting the material together for it. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.